Call this week of the Harriman City Council Labor Fire 2018 order. Before we get started, we'll have a prayer for Councilman Wright. Follows up the pledge of allegiance to the flag. Thank you, I'll do that. Let me say that I've always been an inquisitive about prayers from different groups, and especially our forefathers. And so tonight I'm going to lift one that was uh, said in 1887 by Yellow Lark, who was a Sioux chief. But it really shows me some tremendous insight and belief on his part. So if you join me. Oh great spirit, whose voice I hear in the winds, and whose breath gives life to all the world, hear me, I am small and weak. I need your strength and wisdom. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever behold the red and purple sunsets. Make my hands respect the things you have. Make my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise so that I may understand the things you have taught my people. Let me learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. I seek strength, not to be greater than my brother, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes. So when life fades as a fading sunset, my spirit may come to you without shame. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Can you meet? Here. Sam Russell. Bonnie Wright. Here. Mark Warren. Need a motion to approve the minutes of the March 20th, 2018 meeting? I make a motion. Second. Councilman Johnson. Second. Councilman Meek. Councilman Johnson. No, sir. Councilman Meek. That's right. The floor is open for corrections and minutes. Call the vote, please. Woody Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Kenyon Meek? Yes. Bonnie Wright. Yes. Motion carries. Need a motion to pay the salaries? Councilman Holly. Second. Second by Councilman Wright. Councilman Holly. No. Councilman Wright. No, sir. Floor is open for discussion. Call the roll, please. Betty Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Kenya Me? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. Motion carries. This time we'll hear from our uh, delegation. If you'd like to speak to Council, please stand, state your name, limit your comments to three minutes. <coughs> At this time, I'd like to uh, read a proclamation. Uh, we have a special guest in the audience today. Uh, has done a lot of hard work, and uh, we as a city want to recognize this individual. I want to read this proclamation, and I'll have him come up. Whereas at a time when this nation's youth face difficult challenges, Boy Scouts of America is one of our finest assets, providing men with an educational program that contributes significantly to their character development, consistency of training, and improved mental and physical fitness. And whereas, the attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout requires dedication, hard work, and loyalty to the principles of which scouting was grounded, Jonathan Christopher Whaley, after considerable effort and diligent preparation, joined the Eagle Corps of Honor on February the 10th, 2018. And whereas, the son of Chris and Cindy Whaley, Jonathan is a senior at Midway High School, where he has excelled both in Boy Scouts and extra activity, extra act activities including the golf team, drama club, beta club, and Tennessee Scholar. He also was chosen to participate in the 2016 Governor's School for the Arts Filmmaking. And whereas Jonathan has forged an extraordinary record of accomplishments as a member of the Boy Scouts from the time he became a scout in August 2012. He achieved to first class scout in December 2013, star scout May 2014, and life scout March 2015. And whereas his notable record of achievements as a member of Boy Scout Troop 103 includes 23 merit badges and distinguished services as senior patrol leader. And whereas Jonathan's Eagle Project greatly contributed to the betterment of his community and reflected the true spirit of volunteerism. He raised funds 
forward and install a buddy bench at Bowers Elementary School to empower shy students to make friends more easily. And now, therefore, I, Wayne Best, Mayor of the City of Harriman, do hereby honor and congratulate Jonathan Christopher Whaley. Can Miss Ware too, Mayor, when you give him that some more. says anything we'll go into reports HEB thank you mayor first of all I have the privilege tonight to introduce our new general manager by the name of the utility board Candace Vanisdale Candace uh, is a licensed professional engineer she has a, a bachelor and master's degree in engineering she's been working with us in gas water and sewer for the last several years I think she'll do, a, do an outstanding job and, she also, uh, her and her family moved into our community a few years ago, but just up the street here, and become a Fort part of the community. So, uh, look forward to working with her in the remaining time, and uh, I know she's going to do a great job. So, she'll be here giving these reports in the future. So, so anyway. That would be an improvement, right? Yeah, we'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councilman <laughs> Holly. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. A <laughs> couple, of, couple of things, and then I would like to share something real quick. Uh, our community development block grant, that project is going to replace several water lines that's going out for bids. Those bids will be back in later this month, and hope to get started on that project here, at least late spring, early summer and get that done. Uh, our right-of-way crews have been up on Lad Mountain. I may have mentioned this to you before. We have two 69 KV lines that we actually own on Lad Mountain. They've been clearing those out, and uh, part of the reason is they need to be cleared. The other part is we need to get our electric crews in there to uh, replace several poles need to be replaced, so after the clearing's done, they'll take care of that. Uh, I know this projects near and dear to you, Mr. Holly. Um, we have a feed that goes to the sewer plant. We're required to have two a backup feed to sewer plant, electric feed. So we have one that currently now goes through the old paper mill property down there and goes across the river and then up, up on the other side of the plant. Well, it needs to be replaced. It's needed to be replaced for a long time. Plus, we need to get that equipment out of the way down there. So we have applied for a new permit for a river crossing, which actually will be upstream more directly across from the plant. Um, unfortunately, those permits run anywhere from a year to two years to get them done. We've got some work to do in the meantime to get ready for it, but we are in the process uh, so we can get all that equipment, whatever we got down there, out, out of the way and have the backup feed. So that'll be a good, good project for us and goes along, I know, with cleanup that y'all are doing down at the, at the plant. Uh, Mayor, if I could take just a moment and just say a word of appreciation to you, to the council, to all the department heads, the fire chief, police chief, uh, drag, see drag back, we work a lot with drag, jump in, Rebecca and Alvin, and uh, I mean all the folks, I know have left some people out, but you got a great group of department heads here in the city and our, my privilege to work with. And I appreciate the support 
for the mayor and the, and the council. Uh, you'll be glad to know that I have taken care of my first order of business of retirement. I went up and joined the Henry Golf Course the other day. So. <laughs> Got that knocked out. Took care of that. Uh, look forward to doing that. But I, it's been a great experience for me. I appreciate the opportunity I've had the privilege to be the manager of the utility. One of my goals when I became manager was to build the best relationship possible between the utility and other departments in the city. And I think we've gone a lot of ways to, to accomplish that because we're all in this together to better our community uh, and have a great community. I want to say to Councilman Holly, he served on our board as chairman for several years while I was manager. He's been a tremendous asset to me both personally and professionally. I appreciate all his insight and his his wisdom and keeping me straight sometimes and uh, on some things. Of course, we have Councilman right now serving, doing a great job for us uh, on the board. So, not going anywhere as I told Candace Snow folks. I hope I'm not going anywhere for a <laughs> while. We'll be spending some time in Middle Tennessee where the grandkids are, but uh, you know, I'm still here to help. I'm, I'm lifelong <coughs> resident of Harriman. I'm, con you know, I'm concerned about our community. And, uh, you know, I want to help anybody can have their better community, help the utility, you folks, whatever. Kevin and me, we uh, appreciate working with you, Teresa, all you folks here in the city. So thank you. Thank you for all you've done for me. And uh, I'll answer any questions you have, so forth. And now, yeah, you'll have a much better report. I'm just kidding. Thank you. You also have anything for Mr. Young? Yeah. Do you do? It's been a joy to work with on HG, on HG. and since I left HG, I know Candace will, will really do well, and uh, don't hesitate to pull on his wisdom when you can, or pull his leg too. I do that occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's been a real, a real good friend and a real good asset to HG. Look forward to seeing seeing him more often now that he's retiring. Yeah. But we're, we're here to support you and we're with you. He shows great wisdom. He's on the golf club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate everything you've done, Bill. And I'd like to echo what the councilor said. It is, from my standpoint of, of being the mayor for the last two years, it's been an honor and a privilege. Uh, to work with you and, and and we go to lunch once a month and, and we just don't talk about work. We talk about our families and, and what we want to see and stuff and I appreciate that. Uh, you, you true are a Harmonite and uh, your heart is here and uh, you're going to be missed at HUB truly but we know you're still here. And, uh, so it, it, it has really been a blessing uh, for me. And I'll have to say I was on council in 1999. And uh, if people can remember 1999, what, what was going on in Heron, uh, it, it wasn't like it is now. Right? But, uh, the relationship between the council and HUB and the department heads and HUB is, is outstanding. And it's because of your leadership, and we appreciate that. And, uh, and, and we appreciate our department heads that work with you. And it makes it all easy, easier, and we are in it for the same reason. And that's to make it the best we can for our citizens. I appreciate it. Which reminds me, you and I and Candace have to be <coughs> the same oh, okay. too, so I'll be calling. Okay. <laughs> and I'll let Jacob know since he is here. He did tell me before the meeting yeah. that you was going to go to work picking balls up at the golf course. Well, if they got something to drive, now I'm not going to walk out there. If they got something to drive, I like that job. I'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, fire department. Mayor, he's got a copy of the stats of uh, last month of the calls and stuff. Uh, we had our uh, Easter egg hunt Saturday. I want to thank Alan and his crew. I want to thank HUB for helping us, you know, get eggs and all that stuff, and the community also. Uh, it, was, it was great. We showed up. We got a good time. I see a lot of happy faces down there. Uh, I also want to thank Bill for everything he's done for the fire department since he's been. Uh, and he's really done a lot of work on the department down there at the building and everything, the things that we need done. 
for a long time, and he's never said no to us. And he's always been there 100% for the fire department, and we do appreciate it. I'll take any questions. Anybody got any questions? Anybody have anything for the fire department? <clears throat> Just want to say appreciate you guys. I know you've had two or three house fires this month, and uh, appreciate all you all do and uh, the dedication that the department has. Yes. Please, Mr. Mr. Mayor, our stats will be available at the next meeting, uh, and also later on uh, to, to this meeting, I'll be presenting the information on the camera systems. That's all we have at this time. Okay. Anybody have anything for the police department? <laughs> <clears throat> Special events. Uh, we had our chili cook off, uh, third annual on March the 24th, and it went over really well. We uh, were at a new venue again this year, which hopefully we'll stay there this year um, at the American Legion. It went really well. We had about 150 people come, and we added a band this year. It went, I think that was really well received. It was a nice addition. Um, all three of our winners were actually previous winners. So um, our, our mild winner was Angie Hendrickson. She was number five. Our hot winner was Amanda Bain at number 18. And the people's choice for the third year in a row was the Kingston Fire Department, and they were number six. So um, congratulations to all of them. And thanks to all the, all the teams that helped as well. We had 17 there that day, so it was quite, quite a number of chilies. Um, we have the cruising coming up on April the 14th, just next Saturday from 3 to 6. And we have our new festival, which we're doing in coordination with uh, the golf course, Swings and Wings. It will be on May 12th, and it will be a golf tournament in the morning with a wing competition that will start at the close of that, probably around noon or 1. So now that you're a member of the golf course, you can, you can get a team ready and come compete. I love wing. <laughs> uh, so we've got that to look forward to. And we're going to have uh, sponsorships available. We're going to have golf teams and then wings team, wing teams, and those are all what we're looking for for that. And I'll take any questions. Do I have anything for questions? Thank you, ma'am. Parks and Recreation. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, right now, the big event that we have, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you all out uh, this Saturday, 9 o'clock, at Drax Track in South Heron. We'll be having our opening uh, baseball ceremonies. Uh, this is a big time in the year for the Parks and Rec Department. We've got over 200 boys and girls signed up for our Dixie Youth Baseball and be putting it on your calendar April 28th and we'll have our softball opening ceremony. And so those are the big events we've got going on right now. i also like to take the opportunity to thank Bill for all of his help. Anytime I went to them looking for a donation, looking for a sponsor to help uh, put back into our, our rec department, he's always been willing and always sending crews over whenever we needed help. So thank you for your help, Bill. I've got questions for Parker. I just know from what Alan said, everybody's putting a plug in the canvas for what they're like. Yeah, Bill, remember Bill, you did <laughs> that. <laughs> he might not have, but they're doing it. I hope somebody mentioned those brownies he Sherwood Park. It's up to you all tonight what you do tonight. If we do a couple more big roads, and I'd appreciate the support on that. Uh, Kevin's working real hard to find some money. And, uh, other than that, we're busy. Thank you. Anybody have anything for Mr. Wayne? I don't think we're going to have any trouble getting support coming up. We'll see you here in a few minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wayne. 
Bobbery. We've had a few rains and their step system has worked. <laughs> Thank you all very, very much. The sewer is no fun to clean up. Thank you. <laughs> Of course, you know, there's still rainwater issue, but that's another entirely different issue. So that's worked real well. I appreciate all of y'all about that. Um, we've had one adult computer class, and we're having another one tomorrow night. So if you know anybody that still may want to sign up, of course, we only have so many computers, but we will try to work it in and maybe create some more with the grant that we received from the um, state of Tennessee to, to do the adult classes. And we have, I left y'all invitations there. We're having, um, on next Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we've got Cornstalk Heights in Stone making us $5,000. We need a magazine stand and several things, several bookcases in the library. And um, we are so appreciative of that. And that's National Library Week. So we thought we would um, have a celebration and everybody is invited and we'll have refreshments. And it's at 1 o'clock next Wednesday um, on April the 11th. And I wish Jonathan had not left because I was going to recognize him too. Because he, when he was a little growing up, he won most of our reading competitions in the summertime. So I hate that he left, but he knows he did. So. Um, and of course, we had four different Easter egg hunts last week too. And lots of kids <coughs> had lots of fun. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. We'll have anything from the library. Codes enforcement. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, I've got a kind of report, rundown of what some of the things I've been working on. Uh, I went and attended a kosher class last week. I had a lot of updates for walking, working services, new regulations, things that are coming down the pipe. There'll be some things that we may have to address as a city coming up from going forward to make sure that we're in compliance with. Uh, the year 2036, I know that's a long way off, but there's a big, big change with that coming as far as ladders and things that are access to roofs and what have you have to have certain criteria. Uh, got a public hearing for three properties on the 20th of this month and that will bring that to a total of having four under some form hopefully under some form of agreement after the 20th of houses that are these are burnt houses that are in decision of whether we're going to tear them down or they're going to fix them or do whatever um, any questions of the land name? Anything have any, anybody have anything for codes enforcement? One question. Uh, are we still working on the buildings downtown here? <coughs> All right. Thanks, sir. Chief Finance Officer, Dr. Curtis. Uh, give you an update on property tax collection. We were 89% collected as of today, which is uh, <coughs> not where I want to be, but it's uh, by the end of the FY, I think we'll be up around 94%. So that's good. And speaking of the end of the FY, it's, uh, April is sort of the beginning of the next budget period planning. So I would encourage all department heads to be thinking about what their needs are and uh, what uh, they may be looking for in the future so that we can begin the process of talking about it. <coughs> That's it. Okay. Anybody have anything, Dr. Carter? Thanks, sir. <coughs> City Attorney. Yes. Um, Dr. Curley and I are going to Chancery Court on Thursday for the Harriman Hospitality case. We had a court date, I think it was March 13th, and the Chancellor had an issue with um, the, note, the notice I gave the defendants to be there, so he wanted me to reissue it. So I've done that. I've got a couple motions for default judgment because they haven't responded to us. They haven't responded to discovery, file an answer, that kind of thing. Um, so Thursday, we'll hopefully have an order or a judgment, and um, I can update you 
Um, also, my due date is two weeks from today, so I potentially may not be at the next council meeting or several, depending on how things go. So, um, but hopefully, we'll at least get a judgment to move on collecting a judgment on Herman Hospitality case and just go from there. Do you have anything for the attorney? Thank you, ma'am. City Manager. Just a few things uh, to note for this evening. Um, you should have some information that was left at your uh, seats this evening about the upcoming TML conference in June. Uh, a lot of different uh, educational sessions that I think would be beneficial. Um, and the great thing about this year is the conference is being held in Knoxville, so uh, it's very convenient. Um, they have some classes on Saturday, uh, some sessions on Sunday, um, and it carries over Monday and into uh, Tuesday morning. You can sign up for uh, the entire conference or you can sign up for in individual days. So <coughs> take a look at that schedule and if you want to go over, let me know and we can get you registered for that. Um, <coughs> also, as was mentioned, <coughs> we do have uh, some damage uh, to some of the electrical equipment at Riverfront Park uh, that has taken some lights and uh, outlets uh, out of service. Uh, I've been talking with uh, Keith Lewis and Travis Webb about that situation and how we might be able to rectify it. Uh, it also kind of, uh, <coughs> we, were, we were planning on making some changes anyway, uh, assuming you uh, approve the plan that Assistant Chief Humphreys will present here shortly on the cameras for the park um, with regard to the power down in that area. So um, we're kind of, uh, I guess, going to be rolling this off <coughs> one large project. So we'll be coming back um, in a, a meeting or two uh, and discussing the lighting and power supply down there, even behind uh, just the equipment that was damaged. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that <coughs> the uh, contact from the EPA uh, reached out to me about a week ago and right now they are uh, expecting to have equipment in uh, in early May to begin to clean up uh, at the paper mill site uh, and they're estimating that that work would take between 90 and 120 days to complete so uh, hopefully um, hopefully they'll be able to meet that schedule finally get that project wrapped up. Um, also, just to follow up on something that uh, we discussed about two meetings back, uh, we had a request for a handicapped parking uh, spot to be uh, included uh, on Clinton Street. Um, I did want to let you know that we looked into that and um, the biggest issue that we would run into with regard to um, if, if we decided to put that spot there is uh, because it's not um, reserved for a particular individual. It is a public spot that's being designated. Um, it really require us to upgrade uh, the surrounding uh, facilities uh, to meet the ADA requirements as well. Uh, generally, um, with the plans that are in place now, uh, with, with some of the requirements from the state, uh, we don't do that until we come through and do major project such as paving, milling and curbing, replacing sidewalks in an area like that. Um, so to add that spot, it, it would trigger a fairly significant expense <coughs> for the city to upgrade um, the sidewalks and uh, at the intersection uh, to provide the access that we need. Let's see. Um, do we, do we, let me ask one question, do we, are we still closing that park at night? No, it, it never has been closed. Yeah, we used to close it. I think because it's got federal funds or our funding money or something, we can't close it. Yeah, it's, it's through a grant, some of it, I think, and they, through that grant, you can't close it. I want, I wanted to shut it down about 10 o'clock at night, but they, they say you can't. Yeah. <coughs> okay. We're, are we gonna lock the bathroom? We lock the bathroom for periods of time after uh, vandalism occurrences. But 
now is currently not being utilized. Now. Every light was off there last night, every light. First off, we went down there and, and uh, I met Travis Webb down there and, and Billy Joe, we went down there about nine o'clock. It was half of it was off and the things that go on in that park at night is just, it just shouldn't be happening. And then uh, I took Billy Joe home and went back down, we went back across the bridge and went down there and every light was off. So I went back down there and it was a pretty light. And we had people moving around and it was just, uh, I wanted to lock it. I wanted to lock the gate when everybody unlocked it. Uh, we did run somebody off last night over at the uh, concession, concession stand over at the soccer field. Uh, but it's, uh, and, and they're driving their cars around and we're chasing these little people on the phones. I don't know what that is, but that's what the guy said. I don't know who he was chasing or what he was chasing, but it's hard to get something on the phone. Uh, the camera's hopefully good. Someone damaged the box. Okay. Stuck a steel rod in it, buddy, and broke it. And actually, bent the box and broke it. Same thing they did at Cumberland Park. Broke the box up there. Anything else for City Manager? Thank you, sir. And, and I want to say on uh, the part about the, uh, the paper mill site, uh, I want to thank uh, Councilman Holly. I know you put a lot of hard work into that. And, uh, so now this summer, hopefully, we're going to see the recourse of what you've been doing. We appreciate that. Well, if you hope so. I've been waiting on it. Well, we appreciate your hard work on it. All right, we'll go into old business. Discuss and possibly approve second and final reading on Ordinance 0318-01, an ordinance amending the zoning map of Harriman, Tennessee by rezoning property along Pansy Hill Drive from R1 to OS. Motion to approve. Motion. Motion by Councilman Lee, second. Second. Second, Councilman Johnson, Councilman Lee. Yes, uh, I hope uh, everything goes as planned for him because it's you know, it'll be a, a benefit to the city and hopefully other businesses once they get up and running. So, good luck. Thank you. I think it's going to be a great idea. Okay. Appreciate your support. You're going to bring a lot of business in with that. We certainly hope so. I've been to quite a few of them, so I know. <laughs> That's all I got. Floor is open for discussion. <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Buddy Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. King and me? Yes. Morning. Yes. Motion carries. We appreciate what you all are doing there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This time we'll hear from the council and the mayor. Councilman Johnson. I don't have anything. Councilman Wright. Yeah, just a couple of things. I'm really glad that we got the library problem straightened out. And uh, I'm glad to hear that there's paving going on. Councilman Holly. Mm -hmm. Councilman Lee. Yeah, we got to say anything to Tammy. Let us know if any issues come up with it again. So. Oh, okay. uh, the only thing I have is I want to thank Cornstalk Kites uh, for the donation to the library. And, uh, that's a pretty good chunk of money and we appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I know the library is very important to you all and uh, you all are showing it and we appreciate that. Well, we're happy, we're extremely happy that we've had a couple of successful years and um, so we're looking for things to spend that money on and um, certainly put it back into the library is a, a rewarding project for us. So we're happy to do that. Thank you. New business. First item, discuss and possibly approve first reading ordinance 0418-01, an ordinance to levy an additional sales and use tax within the municipal boundaries of the city of Harriman, Tennessee, for the purpose of increasing infrastructure funding for streets, 
bridges, sidewalks, and stormwater system. Motion to approve. Vote. I second. Motion by Councilman Wright, second by Councilman Johnson, Councilman Wright. Um, it, well, you know, I think we all understand that we're going to uh, move any uh, paving projects or storm sewers and what have you forward, we're going to have to have funding, and this makes more sense than any other source I know. Councilman Johnson. I think it's going to really help getting funds to do, to do all that stuff we need done. And I just hope everything goes good with it. That's all I've got. The floor is open for discussion. Captain, is the copy you sent us of the wording that's going to be on the ballot, is that <coughs> because that was an issue last time, getting it worded the way, I mean, we need to have the exact wording that's going to be on the ballot if we can find out from when the election commission puts it on, so we can put that out there, people, so there's no confusion with it, but that was a lot of the talk last time. Yes, this was, uh, this was taken from the second uh, resolution that was adopted last time, uh, which was the one that went to the ballot. Uh, and then it was just tweaked slightly um, with regard to um, tightening up the definition of infrastructure, um, which is where the streets, bridges, sidewalks, stormwater come into play. Well, when they give you a final version of how it's going to appear, can you send it to all of us so we can get it out there so people will know? Well, then, and uh, I can reach out to them too. And, and just verify because we can make changes between this reading and the second reading if need be. Will they actually rewrite what we what we have? Um, they don't generally rewrite it. Um, they just take a portion from within the ordinance and uh, put that on there. Well, don't let them abbreviate it and say streets and other things. Uh, that's what got us in trouble for and other things. And I'd like to say uh, that we want to be out in the community and we want the community to understand what we're trying to do. Uh, I, I, a gentleman told me yesterday that you know, he was for no tax increase, none. And I understand that. Uh, I've never been for a tax increase either. But to move forward, uh, things go up. You have to do something to generate that revenue to make sure that you, you should keep up with times. And as you all have rode on our roads and seen our sidewalks and seen our stormwater systems and, uh, and things, you see that we have some issues. Uh, and, and I asked this gentleman, I said, you know, you go to the store, you spend a dollar. You, you give the clerk a dollar and nine point five cents. Of course, he said yes, he didn't catch on, but you don't. You give them a dollar and ten cent. That point zero five goes to the state. We don't get that back. They get to do with whatever they choose. What we're asking for is to get it into our city. It's it's our money. We want it back here. They're still going to get point zero zero two five of it, uh, but we're still getting a portion of it. And uh, so we're not asking for something that's not already coming out. Now that person could say, okay, if I spend two dollars, it's just two dollars and nineteen cents. That's true. You go to three dollars, and then you go to a half again. So you, you start counting. You're you're going to be hitting halves. Uh, more than you're not, so we're just asking for the money to come back to the city. And uh, and as Councilman Wright said, we want everybody to understand that the only place that this money can be used is what we define: streets, sidewalks, stormwater system, and bridges. Not vehicles, raises, equipment. That's not what we're saying. We're talking about paving fixing our stuff and, and putting it into it. That's what it's earmarked for. And that's where it'll be used. And uh, But we will be coming out in the communities. We will be going to the Wallace Hill area, the uh, Cornstalk Heights area, West Hills, to meet with the people to explain to them what we're trying to do. We want them to be educated as to what we're doing. We're not trying to raise taxes. We're trying to just get our money back. Uh, if you go, and I said this before, you go to Ray County, Cumberland County, Anderson County, you're at 975. They're already there. Uh, we're just behind. We're trying to catch back up and, and get our money 
to help our place. So uh, we will be out and we'll be telling about it. We'll be pushing it. We'll be, you know, and, and as I said before, and, and I think it was in the paper, if this gets me beat, get beat. Uh, we've got to do something. And, and I want the people to understand, if we don't raise this sales tax, we don't have an option but to come after property tax. We're trying to stay away from property tax. We want everyone that comes into Harriman and shops in Harriman and stops in Harriman to help us with our streets. They ride on them just as much as we do when they come through here. So let's let them help us pay for it. And uh, they won't notice it just like we're not going to notice it. What was it? If you spend $1,000 on whatever, it's $2.50 more or something like that. It was, you know, it's just a small amount. So uh, I hope that you listen and you help us spread the word that we're trying to do something to, to help our, our city. Okay. What Council Matt, would you yield remain to say? Do you yield this? When you get down the road, if you'll write up something, I'll volunteer Candace. She can get it put out in the bills. But you know, I'll go out there yeah. for household. So yeah. get get an explanation written up and that'd be a good way to reach everybody. We can get we can get it sent out with the bills for yeah. Candace to use it. Yeah, I can just open up the library too. <clears throat> So we have to make sure it's stated for exactly what yeah. is printed. Y'all write up whatever you want. Because that's really what got us in trouble. I mean, that's what a lot of people questioned me about last time. And I told them, I said, this way everybody, kind of like when Allen has his sports tournaments and stuff, and all them teams come in, they're going to eat, get gas, stay in hotels, everything here in Heron. So it's going to... It'll really be a big benefit if we could get it passed. Any other discussion? Just one this comment. This is, I looked at it pretty close, and I think we all did. This is about the least painful way I can imagine, and the best way to share the cost to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the good thing is it once. You know, if it's passed, once we get through the paving project, get all the streets paved, then that money that comes in, we can maintain them, not get into this situation again. <coughs> Any other comment? Call the roll, please. Betty Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Can you and me? Yes. Let me write. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item, discuss and possibly approve cameras for Riverfront Park. Um, this is in regard to the, and Mr. Hampson speak more to the grant that's available, the $8,000 grant, is my understanding of this, so not looking at taxpayer funds on this. Uh, but the security grant for the park area uh, down at Riverfront, uh, we looked at several different companies. Uh, one company in particular that's a local East Tennessee company that stood out that, that meets the needs that we put out there is from Alcoa. Uh, it's owned by a guy named Stephen Wilson. You can see on the handouts that I give you there, this would cover, uh, this is where the cameras would go. We're looking at a total of 12 cameras for the park. Um, some of these would be wired, some of them would be wireless, and that'd be two pan tilt zoom cameras. Uh, this would also include a Wi-Fi mesh system uh, that would be on the next page. And it's very interesting on setting this thing up. If anybody here has ever been to a hotel and got on the public Wi-Fi at the hotel, it takes you to a landing page. We would be able to implement something like that at the park, uh, which, which could draw maybe college students down, you know, folks like that. Um, so it would be an added benefit along with this. Uh, but however, uh, it would take the technicality of a company like this to be able to set something like that up. And that's, that's where the, the hard part comes in. Um, also on the next page, you can kind of see the quality. Now these are high definition cameras. This is not just a standard uh, camera system. It, it, and it's expandable to 16 from 12. But you can see up here the HD 5 megapixel. Uh, and then also the comparison would be the one on the bottom right. So it would be much easier. Uh, to read tag numbers or, or things like that if necessary. And for the $8,000, um, what this would include would be a unified mesh Wi-Fi system with both a private network for the cameras and, and for city functions, as well as the public network with the landing page. Uh, a UPS battery backup system, 
Uh, it includes two uh, eight-channel NVR uh, systems with a total of four terabytes of storage, which would be accessible uh, remotely. So officers in their cars will be able to pull this up, uh, and anyone else that uh, the city manager would give access to. Um, it would include a total of five wired cameras, five wireless cameras, and two pan zoom cameras, which, which is also a nice option to add. It includes all the Cat5E wi Cat wiring and uh, network support. Uh, now this is $8,000 with the city providing the power, the pole, and, us, and, and what we're looking at is getting inmate labor to do all the labor work. Now without the labor, uh, just flat out cost would be $18,355. But we're looking at over $10,000 savings by uh, taking some time out, getting inmates down there to, and getting a bucket truck, hanging these things, running the wires ourselves, and then them doing the technical work and providing the equipment. Uh, I, I do strongly suggest that this is the company that we go with. Like I said, we did go with several, looked at several others. Um, no one else comes close to meeting the needs that we need for this. <laughs> Is there an option where you where you could, uh, if you were out the station, you could look at these cameras? Yes, sir. Yeah, it would be remote viewable, not not only from the station, but also from the patrol cars. Patrol cars. Yes, get, yes, get, yes sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, using those iPads that we have. Let, let me just clarify one thing: there are grant funds available to do uh, this with, but it is a 50-50. Uh, grant. So for the $8,000, we're getting $4,000 in grant funds, uh, but there would be $4,000 the city would be putting in the city. When would the grant funds are they, they available now? Uh, yes, actually, we've got to move on this pretty quickly. Or we're losing. It's well needed with everything that's going on down there. I mean, it could have saved us a lot of work of repairing stuff that's been damaged. Also, these, these are also night vision cameras as well. So even in total darkness, uh, they have infrared sensors on them that will put infrared light out and see in total darkness. I move we approve the assistant chief recommendation. I second it. Spend $8,000. Motion by Councilman Wright, seconded by Councilman Johnson, Councilman Wright. <coughs> we got the money on the job. Well, it's a modification of the budget, but uh, you do have sufficient funds to do that. Councilman Wright, or Councilman Johnson. Yeah, it's well needed. Uh, when I was down there with Kenny that day that those guys came down there, and he showed me on his phone, you can put one of those cameras on the bridge right here, and you can zoom all the way to the other end of the park and zoom in on a license plate that big. It's unreal. And it's it'll really help with a lot of stuff that's going on down there. And I think we're going to put one down on the boat dock too, aren't we? Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a map here that shows. We did make a couple of modifications. Yep. Uh, we, we modified uh, a couple of locations there, but I think it better suits the needs that we have. Okay. Floor's open for discussion. Maybe I quit sending Ellen all these pictures at night of these cars that's doing things down there. Start sending the police department. Be careful what you're sending. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> Got a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Buddy Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Can you meet? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. Thank you. Discuss and possibly approve funds to relocate, relocate a section of cart path at Emory Golf Course. This was discussed at the uh, first meeting where we um, talked about the installation of the driving range, that there would be a section of uh, the golf cart path that would need to be relocated. Uh, that would be the uh, one part of this uh, project. It would be the city's responsibility uh, as it is on the golf course property. There were two options that were uh, presented uh, for us to consider, and um, I, I would defer to uh, Jacob if uh, you could talk a little bit about the two different options. Um, you can probably explain it better than I can. I know when we first talked about it at the, at the initial meeting, I said there was a $10,000 option and a $5,000 option based on how we were going to route it. And uh, 
after speaking with a couple of people, I think I found a way to modify it uh, to lower that price for the 5000 down. Uh, I would say 5000 would be a max number at this point. Um, but either way, it's, it's, it's something that probably needs to be done, as we talked about. Um, but it's really, it's really a matter of, of how much we want to put into it right away. Uh, as opposed to doing it piece by piece and working it into the budget over the course of a little bit of time, excuse me, or doing it all initially. $5,000 gets a cart path basically from the new tee box to the green. $10,000 would include a wrap around around seven. Uh, like I said, I think we found another way to do that. So really just the, tea, the cart path from the new tee box that we already built up to the green. Uh, we designed and laid out the tee box right there, and all we need is the cart path to take people up to the green. And I think the hole will be ready to go. So you asked the council uh, for motion to spend up to five thousand dollars for a cart path. The motion to approve uh, spending up to five thousand dollars on the relocation of the cart path at the green golf course. Motion. 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 Councilman May, second. Councilman Johnson, Councilman May. No, we need to get it done so everything will play in together and not not wait on it. <coughs> Councilman Johnson. I agree with Kenya. We need to get it get it going. So we're hoping for discussion. It's going to be a, a big impact on the budget. Event. Anything? It's a modification to the budget, but you have adequate funds. <laughs> it's an amendment. Yeah, I think I think you can do it. Just check. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Call the place. Betty Holly. Yes. Jim Johnson. Yes. Can you me? Yes. Right. Yes. Motion carries. That's all we have on the agenda. I uh, need a motion to uh, waive the agenda rule. Uh, we have two things that we need to discuss. Uh, one is the rec grant that we approved in the last meeting, and the other is uh, some additional funding for paving. Uh, motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Motion by Councilman Wright, second by Councilman Johnson. Uh, Councilman Wright. Councilman Johnson. Uh, call the roll. Lady Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Can you hit me? Yes. Money right. Yes. All right. The first item is the rec grant. I'll let the chief manager tell us what. Do you, do you have a copy before you of resolution number R0418-01. Um, essentially, the uh, resolution is identical to the one that you passed uh, last time, with the exception of um, the next to the last uh, paragraph which reads be it further resolved that the project will meet all federal state and local regulations including but not limited to the american with disabilities <coughs> act um, that <coughs> section was not in the resolution last month it is a requirement of the grant so uh, we're bringing this back to you for a uh, correction to uh, have that expressly stated in the resolution Motion to approve resolution R0418-01. Motion. Motion by Councilman Wright, second by Councilman Holly, Councilman Wright. That's just a necessary addition, right? That's all. Councilman Holly. Floor is open for discussion. Call the please. Buddy Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Can you me? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is uh, some additional funding for paving. Yes, um, as you know, uh, from what the uh, public works director stated earlier, we have uh, begun paving again. Uh, if we do not add additional areas, uh, we'll probably wrap up the paving project tomorrow. Uh, we do have a couple of other streets that uh, we've expressed uh, the desire to try and find a way to pave uh, before we complete this particular project. And uh, we think possibly we've been able to find some funding that we'll be able to do that with. Uh, first of all, uh, 
at this point, we think we will be a little under uh, on what we budgeted for Sandy Drive, and we'll have a little bit of money left out of what we originally had. Uh, add to that uh, the fact that we have, uh, at this point in time, about $55,000 in uh, unspent funds that we budgeted for uh, repair and maintenance of roads and streets uh, within our budget for this year. Um, though we cannot use all of that for this particular purpose um, because we have other needs that we'll have to do within the next few months. Um, the largest impact would be uh, our matching funding that we included for the uh, STP project, the Margrave Drive Carter Street project. Uh, we budgeted that project as if the entire thing would occur during this fiscal year because we really wasn't sure uh, how quickly that would progress. Uh, as uh, is the case, we know um, construction will not begin until the next fiscal year. Um, so our expenditures on our match to that project are limited. Um, so uh, we had budgeted uh, originally $153,000 it would be our match to the uh, total $765,000 project. Um, we only anticipate spending a maximum of $35,000 uh, out of that one fifty-three dollars in this particular fiscal year, uh, leaving a balance of $118,000 um, available. Um, Keeping in mind that we, we have two options, if we did not use this to pay for something else, then that money would basically just go into the reserve, the reserve would build, and we could uh, budget it next year uh, to use, even if we had to uh, budget expenditures in excess of revenue because we carried that money over. Uh, alternatively, we could transfer this money to do the payment that we want to do now and uh, we would just be committing to maintaining uh, an equal level of funding uh, when we adopt the budget next year um, to, to what we had in this year. So it wouldn't require a budget increase next year. We would just have to maintain uh, the same amount of funding or truly uh, slightly less than what we had in there this year. Uh, so what, what we're asking for is to be able to take that $118,000 balance uh, as well as uh, a portion uh, that is yet to be determined of the $55,000 uh, that we have in the uh, road uh, repair and maintenance and um, utilize that to uh, finish paving uh, Basel Road and um, the, uh, the very end cul-de-sac of Clifty Street. Um, and. Uh, those two projects uh, together um, will total uh, some somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 150,000. I move to approve the project. Motion to approve to move the money over. Second. 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 Motion by Councilman Wright, second by Councilman Johnson. Councilman Wright. Yeah, the, I mean, Basil Road is, is probably in the worst condition of any road in town, <coughs> certainly one of those, and we need to get it and finish the other. Councilman Johnson. Line right, it's real bad, and I've been down on Clifty in that COVID, and that's it's pretty rough too going through there. Floor is open for discussion. I'd just like to say on that behalf of Basil Road, uh, I thought that we, I think that some of us thought we was paving last time, so I think that if we can pave it now, it is a, uh, a great deed that we're doing because it is the roughest road probably in the city here. Call the Buddy Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Anything else need to come for this council? Motion to adjourn.
Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, like so.